Well, thanks for clicking on to part two of the 52nd edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Before we get into the video, by the way, I'm less than 100 subscribers away from 5,000. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button. As you know, I'm showing you unique content you're not getting really anywhere else. And I'm trying to show you the big picture, the small picture, and all points in between. So I greatly encourage your view and your subscription here on the channel. And of course, strive to continue to bring ever great content here on marfoganweather.com and youtube be sure to check out marfoganweather.com as well because i have released my august outlook also so there is plenty of material there for you to look at i've also got a summary of the june july period just gone as well the forecast overall looks as if it's playing out pretty well indeed it looks as if we do have a cooler weather than uh, uh, wetter than average august coming up so uh, we'll wait and see if that materializes. So back to the case in point, global warming and how there is always an argument against what you're being portrayed on the TV. These scare stories showing you that the planet is burning up, that uh, we are in uncharted territory. I'm giving you information here that shows that that is probably not the case. And we have got plenty of reason to breathe a little easier knowing that you know whatever's happening between the sun and the face of our planet is nothing particularly unusual or indeed new we're in a period where we've been warming for the last uh, few thousand years since the little ice age and uh, there has been past occasions where the temperature has been in fact warmer than what we are at this moment in time but of course in the age that we live in 24-hour news social media it has went into overdrive people are are not being frightened so much by covid like we've seen in, in the last two three years it's all about climate change now that the media is trying to get into our heads and tell us that we have to act now with regards to the warming that we're seeing around the planet like i've said before several times over are we seeing temperatures surpassing the levels that we've seen already? No, we aren't. There is plenty of occasions, there is plenty of evidence to suggest the temperatures that have been and gone and are happening right now. Yes, we're seeing individual records being broken for, you know, the you know, history of, you know, 100, 200 years, very, very minuscule period of time compared to what we've, uh, of course, the age of the planet is far greater than anything that we are ever going to see in our lifetime. But this is an interesting tweet here by Dr. Ryan Murray, based in Atlanta, Georgia. The climate scientists performed their analysis with that starting in 1950. The first half of the 20th century was not considered, mm -hmm. so the 1930s Dust Bowl was not included. No mega El Nino of 1877-78. Do you think this will uh, affect the virtually impossible uh, conclusion of course we've been told several times over that the heat waves that we've seen in the southwest of the united states uh, the mediterranean basin between africa and europe and indeed southeast asia and china we have never seen before and it would never have happened they're a hundred percent certain that it would never have happened without the increase in carbon dioxide yet we're seeing temperatures that still stand today that were set back in 1913 you know way long before the industrial revolution of course long before we had as many people on this planet as we have got now and uh, yeah it's very very interesting how many scare stories are out there death valley temperature records here this column on the right hand side shows 130 plus days so this is still recognized by noaa in the united states 134 degrees fahrenheit recorded on july 10th 1913 remember that the thought that the record the new world record of 130 of or 54 degrees celsius was going to be broken it fell short of that at 129 degrees fahrenheit still blazing hot but within the ceiling of temperature that we've already encountered so far these are records like i said that still stand noah 131 degrees fahrenheit july 13th 1913 yes it was 130 degrees recorded on july 9th 2021 august 100 uh, august 8th 100, uh, 19 
2020, sorry, and then of course the other temperature again. So there was actually what back in July and August of 2013, there was multiple days higher than anything that we have seen in recent times. So that is quite interesting stuff, of course. And uh, this is an interesting one here. Actually, the BBC, this is another tweet. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping back and forward here. But July 10th, 1977, there was a temperature of 48.8 Celsius recorded in Greece. And remember, they declared a new European record back in August 2021 of 48.8 Celsius. So that there, 48.8 in Greece is dismissed as being a record set back in 77. This is what I'm saying to you. They're tweaking the numbers. They're taking away temperatures. They're adding temperatures here and there. But folks, the, the era in which we're living in is nothing particularly out of the ordinary or extreme, in my opinion, anyway. Also, there was a lot of attention, a lot of drama with regards to a water temperature of 101 degrees Fahrenheit recorded in a shallow lagoon off the south coast of Florida here. Now, if I can try and find the tweet, it is very, very interesting to see how the temperature actually dropped from 101 to 86 degrees thanks to a thunderstorm overhead. And it actually was dismissed, that 101 being a record. So uh, if I can try and find it, it would be very, very help helpful indeed. I do apologize for this. But... Uh, you know, it basically was deemed a world record. Um, the 101 in the ocean of Florida was was it a world record? And you can see here that the uh, waters hit a hot tub level and may have set a world record for warmest sea surface temperature, but it was dismissed. Um, so sorry, I do apologize. Yeah, so so much attention on that 101 degrees being a world record but it wasn't in a perfect environment and that is quite interesting also the bbc by the way um highlighted that we may approach a record an african record of 100 uh what is it um sorry okay so i couldn't really find what i was looking here but this is another interesting example by ryan Mao here the early 1870s, La Nina then led into the droughts and famines that killed 4% of humanity in the latter 1870s. The decade of the 1870s was a truly existential threat, I can't say that word, for millions of humans. History shows us that was a real climate emergency. So, of course, another great example of how things were in the past. Storms that killed thousands and thousands of people, even in the UK, We've got examples of storms that were far worse than we're seeing at the moment. When was the last time we had a truly horrific or violent storm here in the UK? Probably 1987 was the last example of that, particularly so for such an urban area, of course, in the most populated part of the UK. Another interesting tweet here by um, Harry Hardrada. How warm was the North Atlantic sea surface temperatures during the Dantine anomaly? That was the period 1315 to 1321 AD would be a great it would be great to know so of course we're talking about how warm sea surface temperature anomalies are now but this is an interesting expert new world trees displayed the greater growth figure eight the strange fluctuations in sea surface temperatures within the north atlantic seem to have formed part of an episode which began in 1350 to 1318 when unusually warm Atlantic surface waters sustain some of the most persistently wet weather, uh, which brought agricultural um, you know, hardship to many parts of Northern Europe. Um, as Dawson observed, the famine and the great rains of the period 1315 to 1318, as well as the early 1330s across Northwest Europe, appear to have coincided with an exceptional interval of overheating of the Atlantic surface waters that provided a source of moisture for prolonged summer rains as well as winter storms. So, yeah, there is just so much information out there, folks. It's incredible, actually, how much material we have out there that is not being shown, is not being shown. And that is the frustrating aspect to all this 
that you know it's being made out that this is the worst worst storms worst hurricanes that we've ever seen and that is complete nonsense we know that being the case so some uh, in, uh, retweets that i've done in recent days flash flooding in parts of italy you know again the breakdown of a heat wave nothing exceptionally unusual but of course that is attributed to climate change uh mexico approaching their all-time record but again stays below the threshold that we've seen and that was set back in 1995 this is a very interesting one by the way this is a tweet by the, the bbc weather uh could we get close to the african record since the 1950s this weekend 51.3 celsius was achieved uh, in a place in algeria in, in 2018 with 51 possible this weekend but folks that is a record that stood since 1950 and could we get to that the the proof is there that we have achieved incredible heat before long before the population was as high as it is today and uh, that is the frustrating aspect to all this folks that is the, the reason why i'm getting myself worked up and trying to show you the other side of the argument july no question very very warm probably the warmest in recorded history at the moment here so plenty of heat across the planet you can see here very very warm particularly south america a reflection of the developing el nino we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in the coming weeks as well plenty of heat across northern portions of asia cool across north and east europe which is interesting very warm across the mediterranean basin but nothing really stand outish the big standout is antarctica is it possibly a byproduct of the Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption back what a year ago in January? I believe anyway that the strong warming that we're seeing over Antarctica is a byproduct of that eruption that took place back then. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of that idea. But certainly it is very, very warm across Antarctica at this moment in time. Warm across eastern Australia versus the west probably most of africa is warmer than average here no question about that cool continuing across northern india pakistan the monsoon is incredible at the moment we're seeing flash flooding we're seeing record breaking rains in areas that are typically the wettest part of the world actually so incredible stuff here very warm across arctic canada despite the fact that the arctic sea ice is at its highest levels in 17 years uh, Greenland is warmer than average thanks to that negative NAO pattern that we're seeing at the moment. Let's have a close-up view of Europe. And you can see here that the majority of the UK is below average. Northern Europe is below average. Western Iberia is actually below average. And again, the Mediterranean Basin. Notice how we don't have those dark reds uh, representing a very strong anomaly. It's warmer than average, but I would actually go as far as to say it's pretty 50-50 when it comes to the temperature anomaly is it possible that it's actually slightly more cold than average versus warm than average for the month of july possibly but that's interesting isn't it so much attention being brought about the heat in europe but yet this is the temperature anomaly for the month of july so far let's have a quick look at the past 120 days and we'll have a look and see exactly where the temperature anomalies are uh if i can get to the right chart that is it would certainly help this is the last 120 days and you can see here that there's plenty of cool areas across the planet there is warmer than average yes and that atlantic is definitely jacking up the temperatures across europe no question about that northern portion of north america the united states by the way isn't as warm as we can think alaska is below average most of australia is below average most of china by the way is below average despite the fact that we're seeing so much attention on china lately mongolia central africa so yeah ran out of time again of part two i do appreciate your view i appreciate the fact that there's people out there that will dismiss that will get upset by what i'm saying here but it's all about open opinion here and i want to create a channel that people can say what they think without being persecuted because there is a lot of that as well there's a lot of nasty people out there that are fighting either side of the argument saying nasty things at the end of the day we're all entitled to our opinion and we're all open to seeing the big picture don't just take what you're being told on tv reading in your newspapers as gospel it is not necessarily fact maybe not necessarily fact what i'm telling you so stay tuned thanks for watching like share and subscribe see you again tomorrow with more